Hey guys, how's it going? My name's Paul. In today's video, I'm going to run through how to install some accessory sockets into your car with some USB ports and cigarette plugs, some Anderson plugs with waterproof covers here, and also hooking up some LED lights at the back of the car. Alright, let's get to it. Now the owner of this car wants to be able to run his accessories in his fridge and everything while he's parked for camp for the night. So I've installed a second battery here with plenty of fuses and I've got it mounted his charger right in the grill here so it's got plenty of ventilation. If you want to see the installation of the charger, I've got another video, check that one out and it runs through the whole installation of the charger and then we can get the accessories. Now also when I mounted his DC-DC charger, I left a heap of this cabling over here tied up ready to go he wants a solar input so I've got just got uncable tied this run it down through the car put an Anderson plug at the back so he can plug his solar panel straight in and charge his battery while he's stopped now when you're running any wiring down alongside the engine here you want to make sure to cable tie at least every 30 centimeters to whatever you can you want to try and avoid the steering column or exhaust or anything else that's going to get caught in now I would normally find a fuel rail or an existing wiring loom to cable tie every 30 centimeters long under the chassis but as on this side here on the Hilux on the right hand side there's nothing to cable tie against so try and find some extra long cable ties and go the entire length around the chassis and hide the wiring up the top here as you're going along so what I've done now in the tub I just drilled a 19 mil hole with a hole saw through the tub liner and straight through the tub I fed through a draw wire and tied that to my wires and now I'm just pulling it straight through the tub liner. Now this is a standard answer plug. You can mount that straight to your car, but the trouble is you get water um, in there and it'll start corroding. So the solution to that, you can buy these waterproof covers. So simply choose your mounting location. The owner of this car wants it about here. Mark your locations and bolt that in. Now once you have your wire to the length you want, you want to cut it and strip it back. Um, Anderson plugs, I'm using 6mm, you want to always use at least 6mm twin core. Now, just strip back the ends. And in the Anderson plug, I'll give you these little connectors here. Take the ends off. Twist that over. Feed that in. Simply crimp that. Always crimp twice. As once. Oh, a bit hard on this angle. And twice. Do that for the positive and the negative. Now this positive runs straight off of the battery charger for the solar input. And this negative, I've already earthed up the front of the car. That's why I'm running six mil twin core the whole way through the car to the back. Make sure you use convoluted tubing to protect the wiring the whole way along the car as well. You don't want it rubbing or anything. Um, and then cut your tubing to the length you need. And then feed a bit of heat shrink over top of that before you join your connectors. And now you notice when you push in your connector into the Anderson plug, it has a little lip at the front here. You want that lip to go over top of that little metal blade inside the Anderson plug and it will just lock into place and not come out. So there's a negative and a positive on the Anderson plug. So put your negative in, screwdriver. They're a bit tight sometimes, so you need to give it a little bit of a push. And then you can see it's click, clicked in right at the front there. Put the same with the positive. Done. Now just move your heat shrink up. Cover that, and that's done. Now these waterproof covers are really simple. You just have one nut and bolt going straight through it. You undo that, pulls apart. You have two little rubbers. You want one on each side with your two wires in between them, which sandwiches them and makes it waterproof. 
So what you want to start with, grab your Anderson plug, rest the plug inside, it will sit a little bit forward of the cover, and then it should lock in there, that's in there nice and tight. You want to make sure your wires are spread and over those covers. And then get the other piece, put it straight on, put your bolt through, then screw it straight to where you want to go, and it's done. Now, when it comes to fusing, as you can see here, I've got the charger on there. So I'm running a, a 40 amp MIDI fuse, MIDI fuse for the charger. Always run this style fuses for battery chargers. Never run a blade fuse, which is this one here. That one there I'll use for an accessory socket inside. Accessory socket's only rated 20 amps, so you can't buy the MIDI fuses in 20 amps. They start at 30. So we have to go the old blade fuse for that one. The reason you don't go these blade fuses with a charger, um, they're not designed, yet they'll overload um, there's too much resistance and they have heated up and melted in the past That's why Red Arc and everyone else recommends now you use this type of fuse Now up here Like I've said in the past You want your charger fuses as close to the battery as you can That way there's no chance of anything arcing out That way Anything past this wire here arcs out It's going to blow that fuse Now what I've also done over here I've got two more blank plugs over here so we can fit two more MIDI plugs we can run a 30 amp Anderson fuse there normally for an Anderson plug you would do a 50 amp fuse but the owner of this vehicle isn't going to be using it for a lot so we've agreed 30 is all he needs now because when I install the dual battery I earth the battery to the body so now that's completed the circuit so now from now on I'm able to earth straight off with the battery so all you need to do take off the ends because we're not going to be drawing much load you can use these standard type of crimps simply take off the end is one of the easiest ways to do it feed that end on there this is probably the neatest way to do it you can just crimp straight over it but it looks a lot neater if you just feed this in here get your crimp I make two crimps on each side of it. That's it, and lift this back up. And now you don't have an ugly squashed piece of plastic around it. And then we'll just put convoluted tubing and hook it up. Now, when you're connecting your positive to the fuse block, you can't use your standard crimp terminals on those MIDI or MIDI fuse blocks. Um, you won't be able to close the lid. So you have to use a different type of crimp terminal. That's the style you use. Little crimp lug. Very similar. Strip it back, put it on there, and crimp it twice, just like an Anderson plug. Now one way I like to tidy up, when you have one big fat piece of convoluted tubing and then you're finishing off with two skinnier pieces, it doesn't look too nice there. So I'll get a nice big fat piece of heat shrink, put it over the top, shrink that, end up with something quite neat. And then as usual, Get your piece of red for there, positive, and your black over here, and cover up that yellow. And that's what it looks like once you're done. Now I'm connecting the Anderson plug to the battery now, but I'm not fusing it yet. I've got it on here so that I can start cable tying along the car underneath, right underneath, so I know my length by the time I get to the other end. Now with this rear Anderson plug he's gonna be using for his fridge on the left hand side, I've done something different, and I've looped the six mil Anderson plug into that terminal but I've also crimped in a 5mm twin core as well that's going to run to the back and that's what's going to power his lights through a switch. Now to connect these two lights I've tapped off of the Anderson plug around there ran the wiring along here wiring comes out here for the positive I've tapped onto both positives of both lights so that's always got power constantly but for the negatives I've joined it there I'll put a switch in here, drill a 9mm hole, put a nice switch in, connect the two negatives there, and that'll turn the lights on and off. Now, unfortunately, I'm running late for my anniversary dinner, so I better hurry up and get my ass into gear and get ready for that. 
So we'll continue this video in two weeks time. I've got the camper trailer video next week. So I'll catch you guys then.